Welcome to the Insider Weekly. I'm Kevin Fritz, your host with Iron Point Mortgage here in Folsom, California. We have the new March housing report published by the California Association of Realtors. As forecasted, the markets continue to gain momentum at, on existing home sales. We're up 6.3% from February and up 7.3% from March 2014. The year-over-year -year sales increase was the first back-to-back -back sales gain that we've had since December of 2012 and the largest observed since 2012 May. The statewide number of single-family homes sold is 368,000. The median price of an existing single-family residence detached California home jumped in March for both the previous month and the year. The median home price was up 9.2% from 429,000 in February to 468,000 in March, the highest level in seven months. So we've got some really good news in the market. And the increase was stronger than the long run February to March average of 3.9%. Well, the time on the market index also fell from five months in February to 3.8 months in March. A six to seven month supply is considered typically in a normal market. While the housing supply has been improving in recent months, the growth rate in housing demand has continued to outpace the inventory, which means it's a seller's market and it pushed the home prices higher. Our new listing highlight this week comes from a good friend of mine, Terrence Springer with Remax Gold. Let's see what you got, buddy. Hi, my name is Terrence Springer with Remax Gold. Today I wanted to introduce you to my new listing at 104 Horn Court here in Folsom. It's a single story with very high ceilings, about 2,000 square feet, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, park-like yard with a massive pool. If you want privacy and beauty all wrapped into one, this is your home. Once again, I'm Terrence Springer with Remax Gold. Thank you. Great job, Terrence. If you have a client that's going to be a great fit for this house, give Terrence a call and he'd be happy to get you set up. Let's face it, we all get bombarded with emails all day long, including email from businesses, newsletters, personal emails, social media updates, and of course, enticing emails from somebody on the other side of the world. No wonder why people, our clients and prospects, ignore our important emails. Through all of that noise, we need to find an effective method to break through and capture their attention. Here are four basic practices to abide by when writing emails that are gonna make them get open. Number one, keep it simple and personalized. There's no need to write a dissertation for an introductory email. Instead, keep it personal, short, simple, straight to the point. Your email should really take no more than about a minute to read. The first thing people do is try to decide if they're gonna read it or just shut it and forget about you. Number two, create a stellar subject line. For example, Kevin from Iron Point Mortgage following up on my voicemail would capture attention because it's clear that I'm trying to communicate directly to them. So my email must be important. The stats show that personalized subject lines are 22.5% more likely to be open. Number three, be honest. You want to gain trust and credibility through your email. More scum's mama in this case is wrong. A little white lie can really stop you cold. Number four, no product dumping. Last, please do not product dump. People that go and open their email do not want to be pushed into what they want you to buy. Just have a candid conversation. The goal is to cut through the clutter and talk directly to them. Every scenario may require a slightly different approach when emailing a prospective client, but follow these guidelines and watch your conversion rate climb like crazy. Alright, a question for hashtag Ask Mortgage Broker this week is how do seller contributions work? Great question. A seller contribution is simply an amount that the seller contributes to a buyer's prepaid and closing costs. Here's how it works. Number one, work with your lender to determine exactly how much you're going to need for your prepaid items and closing costs. Seller credit can only be used for closing costs and not to reduce the amount of your down payment. If you get too much credit from the seller, well, then it won't be able to be applied and the seller's credit will go back to them, thus really leaving money on the table. 
Number two, once you know how much you're going to need, your realtor can write an offer to say what you'll want the seller contribution to be. Usually it's in the form of a percentage of the sales price. So for example, if you're looking at 2% on a $400,000 loan, that's $8,000 that can be applied directly to the non-recurring and recurring closing costs. Anyway, that's it for this week's edition of the Real Estate Insider Weekly. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the feedback. Definitely pass it on and keep the questions coming. Again, I'm Kevin Fritz with Iron Point Mortgage here in Folsom, California. Have a great week and we're always here to help you grow.